For today's video, we're going to be looking at Effigy of Graven Image and Holy Idol. This is a book that was written by Martin Duffy, a very large book. In fact, I think it's the largest book in my collection uh, as far as both size and content. And um, yeah, it's, it's published by Three Hands Press. Wanted to give you a side view just to see the overall scale of this book is, is huge. Um, and on the back we've got a, a picture of, of Baphomet. And I, I really love the, the cover um, that they included with it. Uh, this, this one here, particularly. <laughs> uh, just the color and the simplicity on the spine. Uh, I think it's very good, um, very good choice. Now if we look through the text itself and some of the contents, see this was back from 2015. One of the first pieces of art on the cover. Introduction, the Genesis of Clay Man, that talks more about the uh, creation of humans out of clay. Uh, as far as the Genesis account of creation. Materials of construction really goes through uh, wax, uh, corn husks, other forms of clay, dirt, metal, wood, carvings, uh, methods of constructing and enlivening, the use of dolls, dolls as an idol. And you can see these are pretty big sections later on. Used a good introduction as far as how his effigies and idols really came to be and then how man was created and how practitioners will try to replicate uh, this this act. I'm just going to set this book down because it's quite heavy. And then within each chapter you'll have these little additional sections that you can read for further information. And that one's talking about Iblis in the Islamic lore his role in creation. I also like these footnotes uh, that he references throughout to give you the proper source but also to um, provide a source for additional learning if you wanted to read those books if they're available or if you have the additional funds to purchase them. With all things occult books they can get quite expensive over time. I'm not going to go through all the pages of this video, it would be probably 15 minutes of me doing that. Uh, but I do want to highlight some things. Uh, the Witch Bottle I thought was a very, uh, very well written, I mean the whole book is well written, but the Witch Bottle really stuck out to me as far as the level of detail, what would be inside the Witch Bottle, how it would be used. The Necromantic Urn and Spirit Vessel. I think one of the things that really stood out to me most about this book was that it was such a vast array of, um, of cultures and subject matter. You know, sometimes you'll read a book from a publisher and it's just going to be one particular belief or beliefs from that country or from that era. Uh, but this, I think, provides a great expanse for, for so many different views. There's a chord effigy. Um, that's a reference in the Museum of Witchcraft in Cornwall. There's a knotted love doll. Bread and salt dough dolls. Dolls of the field. This is something that would be kind of used around this time of year, around harvest. Also gets into jack-o'-lanterns and their integration or, I guess, interaction with Will-o'-the-Wisps and those stories. Uh, one thing that I like um, to research and study is the Hand of Glory and variations of it. So there's a good section on that as well and how it would be used and how it could be obtained and even some of the lesser known and far less desirable methods 
of constructing dolls. Um, well, I guess from unborn children that were taken from uh, from dead mothers, apparently. So that's uh, that was a that was a different read. <laughs> Bestial effigies. I think this is really where it gets into some more of the introduction of Baphomet. I really wanted to show that one. I should have marked it before I started this video. But in my opinion, I think it was one of the best uh, write-ups. If you want to write, if you want to pause this, then feel free to do so. But most of us are familiar with Baphomet uh, and his symbol before it was hijacked by the Satanic Temple. But you can look through here and see uh, a write-up of his history and then what each part of Baphomet uh, represents in a symbolic nature. And, uh, I mean, obviously this is stuff you can find anywhere. It's been written hundreds, if not thousands, of times. But I think this was a very concise write-up with some really good art uh, that doesn't really... Um, I guess drone on for too long. It's just the right amount. And um, again, you can see some more information here. Let's see if I can just flip through. Uh, again, this is really where it's showing how the dolls are used. It says Pierce Curse Effigy after an image uh, in the Museum of Cornwall. Again, a lot of the references are taken from that museum. Some examples of the rites and the formula that would be used for such a work. Dolls of Love and Lust. Again, general concepts that you'd be familiar with uh, as far as old uh, traditional curses, blessings, so on and so forth. Uh, but just with the focus of a effigy or an idol to enhance the ritual, so to speak. Uh, again, there's a lot of good information here. I don't want to go through the whole thing, but I'm, I'm pretty much doing that. <laughs> It's just such an intriguing book, and when you start to get going through it, it's hard to it's hard to stop. But hopefully, this preview and brief overview gives you some good information about the book. Uh, again, I highly recommend it. You can still find it, even though it came out five years ago. Um, if you do see it, I highly recommend it. And as always, thanks for watching.